Oh my god, can't wait. SpaceX will make full stack reusability a reality in 2025. So, is it feasible? Find out in today's Tech Map episode. After an exciting Sunday, Starbase is back to normal life, but the echo of Starship's historical Flight 5 still lingers. The October 13th test is considered one of the most dramatic, high-risk space flights to date with a spectacular return to the launch site of a gargantuan Starship Super Heavy. Imagine for the first time a 23-story skyscraper being caught on two tiny little hooks by metal chopsticks. Imagine what if a tiny error had happened at that time that caused the horror collision between a 100-ton block and a large concrete launch pad underneath. Fortunately, that is not the case for Starship Flight 5. SpaceX has managed to eliminate all the risks, demonstrating an unprecedented feat of engineering. This success inspired SpaceX CEO Elon Musk to aim much more ambitiously, successfully catching both stages of the Starship rocket. More importantly, it will not happen in two or three years. In the next year instead, well, I don't know what to say. Good chance that Starship achieves full-stack reusability in 2025, which is the critical breakthrough needed to make life multi-planetary. He stirred up the entire space community on October 14th with an inspiring tweet. So, is that goal feasible? First and foremost, we should understand that prior to catching the Super Heavy booster, thousands of distinct vehicle and pad criteria had to be met. The safety system is also ensured when, in a worst-case scenario, the booster's flight computer will direct the stage to a splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico if any problems develop on the rocket or the launch pad capture mechanism. But in Flight 5, no such problems were detected. A bullseye landing was made and SpaceX has enough confidence to do it again in the next launches. How However, during descent, Booster 12 met some anomaly, but SpaceX will analyze the gathered test data and better the system. For the Starship's case, things will be more complicated. While the Super Heavy booster can utilize its engines to slow down before being caught, the Starship requires a different approach for landing. The Starship employs a belly flop maneuver during descent, which involves a horizontal freefall followed by a rapid vertical adjustment to manage its landing. This complex maneuver demands precise timing and control from the Mechazilla arms. At that point, the ship itself also requires operation as planned, and most notably, the heat shield needs to be reliable first. In preparation for the fifth flight, SpaceX applied the new designs to Starship's thermal protection system, including the secondary layer, namely the ablative material, and 2x stronger heat shield. They work pretty well, even though they are just being tested for the first time. Indeed, improved heat shield tiles and beefed up steering fins worked as needed to protect the spacecraft against the hellish heat of re-entry. As the Starship re-entered the atmosphere, cameras on the rocket showed the reddish glow of heat building up on the belly of the spacecraft, intensifying as the descent continued. Engulfed in a fireball, the ship's fins stayed intact, and the vehicle came through peak heating in good condition. This sets it apart from the rocket's fourth test flight in June, when the extreme temperatures caused significant damage to the Starship's protective tiles and steering fins. Multiple upgrades and improvements were put in place for Sunday's flight to eliminate or minimize any such re-entry damage. Certainly, the new update will be improved, and much better in the next tests. In addition to the heat shield, several other parts of the ship need to be perfect. SpaceX will need to retrieve the ship from the ocean to study. The vehicle had an on-target splashdown, followed by what appeared to be an explosion in October. Given the rocket is not intended to land in water, whatever happened after splashdown was incidental to what can only be called a successful test flight. Apparently, technical matter is not the only boundary that SpaceX has to bypass to achieve Achieve the goal of full-stack reusability in 2025. There is a truth that SpaceX always has to be wary of the FAA and its unreasonable regulations. We admit that getting FAA and government approval for a Starship test flight is definitely one of the most difficult things to launch Starship. There is now good news that the FAA will not require any investigation as a result of Flight 5, because all flight events for both the Starship vehicle and the Super Heavy booster occurred within the scope of planned and authorized activities. No investigation would significantly shorten the gap between Flight 5 and Flight 6. Also, the U.S. federal agency has already approved a launch license for SpaceX to fly the next Starship with the same mission profile as Sunday's test flight. Nevertheless, the FAA is not the root cause of the problem here. Thus, Elon Musk believes that Trump's win in the U.S. presidential national election 
will solve them all. Otherwise, if Trump is not elected, the slow strangulation by overregulation will stop humanity from reaching Mars. From deep down, I hope that SpaceX can get what it dreams about. Godspeed. And I'm sure you're thinking the same thing. If you agree, please comment. 2025 in the comment section below. Anyway, it's impressive to see SpaceX continually pushing the envelope of technology as it continues to push boundaries in the quest for multi-planetary life. As SpaceX rapidly advances its Starship launch system through its test flight program, it has become apparent that it will soon be possible to voyage to the Red Planet. Elon Musk made a prediction about the future time frame when Starship will land on Mars. SpaceX plans to launch about five uncrewed Starships to Mars in two years. At that time, there will be some problems, as the Mars Society president and aerospace engineer Dr. Robert Zubrin said that a problem with Starship is that because it's so massive, it takes a great deal of facilities to be able to refuel it. So he anticipates that the few Starships that first land on Mars will stay on Mars. The dawn of Mars colonization will require a massive amount of cargo, including vital equipment to Mars, and possibly robots with capabilities to set everything up before the first human arrival. Part of the first deliveries to Mars could include supplies such as power generators, large batteries, and solar panels that would aid in building powering a propellant plant to refuel Starship and eventually come back to Earth. Zubrin pointed out that it would take six to 10 football fields of solar panels to refuel Starship within a 500-day stay on Mars. And if those landings go well, then the first crewed flights to Mars will be in four years. Of course, it is in the best scenario. But in fact, we are just able to do it after the landings are proven to be reliable. If those all land safely, then crewed missions are possible in four years. If we encounter challenges, then the crewed missions will be postponed another two years. It is only possible to travel from Earth to Mars every two years, when the planets are aligned. This increases the difficulty of the task but also serves to immunize Mars from many catastrophic events on Earth. That means we can theoretically conduct the first manned mission to the Red Planet between 2030 and 2032. Musk emphasizes that regardless of landing success, SpaceX will exponentially increase the number of spacecraft traveling to Mars with each available transit opportunity, aiming to make space travel accessible to anyone who dreams of adventure. No matter what happens with landing success, SpaceX will increase the number of spaceships traveling to Mars exponentially with every transit opportunity. We want to enable anyone who wants to be a space traveler to go to Mars. That means you or your family or friends, anyone who dreams of great adventure. Eventually, there will be thousands of starships going to Mars, and it will a glorious sight to see. Can you imagine? Wow. However, as usual, the biggest boundary for Mars colonization is always red tape. One of my biggest concerns right now is that the starship program is being smothered by a mountain of government bureaucracy that grows every year. This stifling red tape is affecting all large projects in America, which is why, for example, California has spent tilde dollar $7 billion and several years on high-speed rail, but only has a 1,600 feet section of concrete to show for it. While I have many concerns about a potential Kamala regime, my absolute showstopper is that the bureaucracy currently choking America to death is guaranteed to grow under a Democratic Party administration. This would destroy the Mars program and doom humanity. It cannot happen. Your help would be much appreciated. This is a fork, maybe the fork, in the road of human destiny. Mentioning Musk's vision, world-renowned physicist Dr. Michio Kaku agrees. As an insurance policy, we have to make sure that humans become a two-planet species. And now, of course, Elon Musk has revived this vision by talking about a multi-planet species. Even Neil deGrasse Tyson, who calls himself one of SpaceX's biggest critics, also believes that Musk's SpaceX Starship Orbit project has more merit and has a higher chance of going beyond suborbital flight. The concept of SpaceX is, we want to send people to places. It is an effort to push that limit, that frontier of exploring space. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.